This is Timu. Unless you've been hiding under a rock or you're Amish, no offense to Amish people, there's actually a great buffet in East Earl, Pennsylvania. Sorry, sidetracked. But you know what Timu is? An online shopping app from China. Now, Timu, for the second year in a row, its ads appear during Super Bowl with the same tagline shop like a billionaire. In some sense, though, they ain't lying. With the inflation prices, the currency exchange, and how unbelievably cheap their stuff are, it feels like you are a billionaire. Now, Timu has spent billions of dollars on advertisements. Its three ads during the Super Bowl costed $21 million. And according to their numbers, $15 million more will be used for giveaways. Chances are, this video will probably have a Timu ad. One of these weirdly shot videos with cringe dialogues. Now, at present, Timu's reputation is an online cheap shopping experience, and it is losing money, sort of a business model. But why would any business not want to make money and go out of their way to spend $15 million on giveaways? Now, in my view, China is planning something sinister, and it has to do with an economic pandemic, and they're trying to unleash on the world. But the good thing is, it will fail. Welcome to China Insider. I'm David Zhang. Happy Valentine's Day. Right now, China is in deflation while the rest of the world deals with inflation. Now, this is very important for us to focus on today. The Financial Times warned that China is trying to export deflation onto the rest of the world once again. Falling prices in China will push down inflation rates worldwide this year as excess capacity in its slowing economy prompts Chinese exporters to essentially cut the price on goods that they're selling abroad. Normally, selling things cheap isn't optimal for making money. But in the eyes of China, that's not a problem. Now, disclaimer here, the most of what the actual reports are talking about deals with exports on things like metal, large machineries, solar panels, construction materials, etc. But what I want to do today is use the Timu example for more of a consumer-friendly, pun intended, side of things. But the concept is still the same. So this means that things from China will be extremely cheap and to the point where they will drive out domestic competition. And that's dangerous. Timu is an app where you can get a $10 steamer as the one we bought. And the saying goes, you get what you pay for. It doesn't steam well. Much like many things on Timu, they either break, don't function as advertised, or are simply poorly made. After all, their cheap prices come at the cost of slave labor in Xinjiang, or simply work camps like this video shows here. It produces goods 24 hours of the day, and workers are not in optimal working conditions. They live in these compounds, in dormitories. They do rotational shifts around the clock. On the app, you can get free items when you buy $25 worth of things, or $35, or $50. Or just in general, the more you buy, the more you get. And this is today. You can actually get $100 for just signing up and buying things. It's like they're throwing money at your way. Even if it means they aren't profiting from it, they're still spending money to get people to shop on Timu. So the question is, what exactly is the purpose here? What Timu and its parent company, PDD, isn't telling you is that this model of cheap goods is driving out domestic businesses. Sure, many things are from China, even if you buy them from a store. But on Timu, that item is a fraction of what it would cost to buy it in stores like Walmart or Target. And much like Huawei did with telecommunication equipment contract bidding, they offer contracts at such a low price, governments have no choice but to take them because simply they are at fractions of what other telecoms like Ericsson or Cisco could offer without losing money. So the same thing happened also that destroyed the U.S. manufacturing industry. Things were just so cheap to be made in China compared to the domestic manufacturing that they had to move everything to China. It's so cheap to the point where it forces people to buy on Timu just because domestic businesses cannot compete against that lack of profit margin. In other words, they're maximizing reducing price competitiveness in the domestic market. Imagine why would an American with $2,500 spend 80 bucks on a shower head when they can get something similar for 10 or 20? For many, Timu is still an attractive option, or it's what they can simply afford. Especially when it's inflationary, things are so expensive that the cheaper alternatives are just their way to go. So Timu is pouring literally billions of dollars into this effort to dominate U.S. retail, and it's willing to lose tremendous amounts of money to get there. They want to dominate the market and not make a profit because they're looking for a long-term goal. China doesn't just export cheap goods. They export cheap goods so freaking cheap 
that it destroys the entire supply chain, from manufacturing onto consumption. China spent 20 years destroying emerging market competitors in the manufacturing space, or at least try to squeeze them out of the global markets. And now it's threatening to do the exact same to advanced economies manufacturers. And guess what? They can do so without paying a single dollar in tariff. Before we talk about why it's a problem, here's a ad break from Purita. If there is one supplement you want to get incorporated into your diet, it's a good omega-3 supplement. It's the best all-around defender for your health. It reduces inflammation, cholesterol, improves eyesight, and reduces risk for heart problems, as well as helps with joint pain, among other benefits. Today, I want to introduce you to Puritan's green vegetables. Puritan gets their ingredients straight from the high mountains of South Korea, and the omega oils are extracted from purslane and perilla seeds. It's 100% vegan. Now, personally, I've been using Omega for about nine years, close to 10 years now. I've recently switched to Puritan for about a few weeks now. Here's why. We mostly get our Omegas from fish, right? But that's not the best case for everyone, especially there's the aftertaste. It might not be suitable for vegetarians or vegan. Uh, so the most important part, right, we often forget is the actual concentration for Omegas. Puritan soft gels have a much higher content for Omega 3, 6, 7, and 9 than many of the brands out there. And some say that they notice there's less hair loss, more energy, lower cholesterol levels, and overall improved health. I think the best part for me is the lack of information or the reduction of information. Other brands also they use this high heat method to extract the oil, which in turn creates a lot of harmful byproducts. Puritan's green vegetable is done using a patented method of supercritical carbon dioxide low temperature extraction. So it preserves the natural properties and maintains high purities. First of its kind, so get it for yourself or as a gift to your loved ones ahead of the holiday season. Use my code DZ2023 and you can receive free shipping globally. Check out my link in the description and comment today. Now, US trade law allows anything valued under $800 to enter the United States duty-free. It's intended for tourists to bring back stuff from vacation. But Timu and fellow Chinese e-commerce brand Xi'an have essentially exploited this because they send their merchandise direct to consumer. And they avoid tariffs because this stuff is just so cheap. Nobody's spending $800 on Timu. At least I think nobody is. In 2022, there were about 600,000 packages sent from Xi'an and Timu every single day. On the other hand, Walmart is also selling China-made stuff. They have to pay tariffs on the stuff that they get from China because it arrives on cargo ships. After all, the direct-to-consumer model also allows the companies to dodge US customs inspections. So that means, along with that, skipping tariffs, Timu and Xi'an are able to bypass enforcement of the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which was put in place in 2022. It would ban any items connected to the forced labor that the Chinese region of Xinjiang from being imported into the United States, again, because of these laws. Now, all at the same time, Timu, like many other Chinese-owned companies or apps like TikTok or Genshin Impact, would actually harvest data from users. So, this, again, not the point of the video today, but I'm trying to tell you that this is a comprehensive danger because I think something else is taking place. Now, an economic virus, sort of like what happened during the pandemic in 2020, they're trying to plan to bring everybody else down a notch along with the dying Chinese economy. China, since its accession to the World Trade Organization back in 2001, have essentially used export, one of its key economic pillar, as a weapon, especially given that now there is the lowering of the Chinese currency, and they've artificially used it to levy exchange rates against the US dollar, providing more buying powers for foreign consumers. Think of it like you have a dollar. It's worth a lot now to that of the Chinese yuan. So it means if you go to buy something from China, you can get more for that same dollar. Today, something troublesome is happening in China. It's entered deflation. Now, its economy is so bad, for the past two, three years, even government employees aren't getting paid. Workers are not getting paid. Well, it's always been a common occurrence. It's a chronic problem in China. But today, it's different. The problem with deflation is that it often isn't just an economic issue. It's more of a political one, and it's quite apparent in the case of China. People in society simply don't want to participate due to political reasons. And after three years of the, uh, the pandemic lockdown, it's fair to say that Chinese people are quite scared to spend money. And it's all because of a term I call Xi effect. It's doing the uttermost counterintuitive commands for political stability only for it to backfire. 
Now, contract workers and migrant workers, they're also not traveling back home during the Chinese New Year. This year, it seems to be the lowest of all annual Lunar New Year travel rush, and it's expected to reach historic low, according to the Financial Times. Now, there's even a trending term in China called breaking ties, as in no more visits with relatives during the New Year to be avoided with questions like, how's your job doing? How much are you making? Are you getting married? Do you have any savings? Unpaid wage, like I said, has been a chronic problem in China, but now it's exacerbated by the economic trend to the point where actual government employees, right, so, uh, these public servants, they're also facing issues with not getting paid. So it's not a great Chinese New Year this year to start it off with. Meanwhile, those that do have money, they're not spending it. So China wants to find some level of pressure relief through exports once again, which, okay, again, it's, it's also really bad right now. But the point is, some people think that exporting deflation is good as it cuts down the prices of goods worldwide. But the problem is if China does it, they're not doing it out of, uh, I guess you would say, the sake of global peace. If it were quality products that we're talking about, then of course it would help. But that's not really what China is exporting, is it? Deflation is the opposite of inflation because it comes with a troubled problem of not enough people spending money. So that means lower consumption. It turns a lower demand and then if there's no demand, there's no money for the government and there's no economic vigor. On the other hand, inflation is quite straightforward. Things tend to get more expensive. So people are encouraged to spend more money now because they're afraid that the prices of goods will get even higher. So if they don't buy it today, it's gonna get more expensive. In some sense, inflation allows the economy to move forward, whereas deflation causes the economy to stagger and slow down because people have no demand for things. So facing this problem, China is figuring out a solution, which is how about if we just take our problems and export it to the rest of the world? And that's what they're doing. So what exactly does that mean? Well, think of Timu, right? If you can sell things at such a low price already from China's perspective, why not just incentivize foreign buyers to boost your consumption for you by buying more things at a cheaper price? Since the pandemic lockdowns lifted in China, export and manufacturing, they've been destroyed. Xi effect. Now, by introducing cheap alternatives, it essentially increases supply. It also lowers the demand of the domestic manufacturers. So in turn, slows down the economy because, in other words, China successfully lowered the comprehensive national power of a nation, just as it did with the 2020 pandemic. At the same time, because it's going to boost its domestic manufacturing and export numbers, it's driving more money into its own economy. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a competition between who can get things cheaper, who is the consumer willing to buy, and if it's China winning in the end, then they dominate the market. Now, to end this, I want to say that this is not going to be a long-term problem because we recognize that China isn't as attractive as it was 10 years ago, especially when it comes to the actual goods, such as large-scale exports, right? Apps like Timu, they're not going to do much in the grand scale of things. And they're facing so much backlash. Most of it, as I said, in Chinese society, the Xi effect, it's only going to get worse for China's economy. This year, 2024, is not one for economic recovery. It's more to do with China's decline. And uh, a bit of foreign consumption won't fix that. Anyways, that's it today for the episode on how Timu and China is doing a sinister plan to unleash deflation around the world. But in the end, it will fail. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye-bye.